today I'm taking one of the hottest EVs out there on the German Autobahn for a high-speed test, the Audi e-tron GT RS in 4K, full screen and full length. Let's go! <laughs> That info was really needed today, wasn't it? <laughs> so Audi is calling this one Audi RS e-tron GT. And I'm not okay with that. That's why I rename it in Audi e-tron GT RS. It just makes more sense and sounds cooler, doesn't it? Tell me in the comments. In the front, you can see this closed EV front grille, of course. You have different options. You can go here with the vehicle color. You can also have it in a gray shade and also here with the mask around. You can have it here in black, for example, but also carbon fiber. So a lot of individualization is possible. Here, the Audi rings are also black in this night package. And it also does not depend if you go for the RS version or for the base version. Styling wise, you can pick almost anything. Also here, the special e-tron GT color called tactical green. Yeah, I mean, I came as close. It didn't really 100% fit my clothing, but I think it's adds as far as it gets, actually. <laughs> LED lamps are standard, a nice signature here, and the e-tron GT RS gets the matrix LED option as standard then, and optional even for the RS, the laser lights. And one of my favorite features here, the cascading turning indicator light, or here also when you turn on the hazard lights, that looks super fancy, doesn't it? And that's why you already get a rear end spoiler right here. Sp Wait a minute, spoiler? That has a double meaning for a vehicle, right? Yeah. Are we rolling? Oh, um, yeah, 21 inch wheels. These are the biggest ones available. It goes 19 to 21 inch wheels. And they, of course, look really massive. The RS comes with the tungsten carbide brake disc. As now I closed the vehicle because I was, you know, hitting the, the door handle from the outside here from the inside and I can open it again. So uh, tungsten carbide brake is standard. This one here is optional, the carbon ceramic brakes, which are, of course, even more expensive. And the interesting thing is here, the RS version comes with a lot of standard equipment, which is otherwise optional for the normal e-tron GT, for example, the rear axle steering, a fake rear differential lock, so to speak, because everything is done electronically. Then also the three chamber air suspension, otherwise also an option. So you pay around 40,000 euros or dollars more for the RS version comparing to the normal base version. But then you have also all this equipment already included. And interesting here, this huge shoulder area, this is really strong, so design-wise, Really awesome. The question is always, do you like the Taycan more or the Audi e-tron GT? Both are platform siblings and share the same technology. The question today is also, is it really worth to go for the RS? And also, would I go for this one rather than the Taycan? You can also get the panoramic roof, a fixed one, but here we have the carbon fiber roof. Wow, what an awesome perspective here of the vehicle. The three-quarter rear perspective is to me yeah, the most beautiful one of this vehicle. The light strip here goes all the way through and you've already seen the cascading rear lamps. RS badge in here for this top version and we also have this carbon fiber package here folks on the lower part and strong diffuser style right there. Figures coming in. The rear axle steering goes maximum 2.8 degrees in the opposite direction to the front wheels up to a threshold of 50 kilometers or 30 miles an hour and then switches to the parallel direction to give you a little bit more stability. At lower speeds, reduces the turning circle and gives you more agility. And 3.3 seconds is the acceleration figure here for the RS model. That comes actually, or it's almost the same like the Porsche Taycan Turbo. The Turbo S is a little bit faster, but won't make such a difference. Top speed, 250 kilometers an hour or 155 miles an hour. That should be enough. <laughs> No, it's really not needed. It's it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. See ya. See ya, man. See ya. Sorry, this was Frank Drabin from the Auto Fuel Fake Exhaust Police. I just had him here on the phone and I told him, yeah, there's no job for him today. Recharging here the main flap for the German vehicle on the right side. For the UK vehicle, it would be the other way around. 11 kilowatt AC, 22 kilowatt AC optional, come on, make that standard, and 270 kilowatt DC charging. That's really enormous with an 800 volt technology. That means five minutes 
and you gain back 100 kilometers or 60 miles of range when the battery is fairly empty. You know, and that's also the thing about the Audi e-tron GT and the Porsche Taycan. They do not have the highest range overall, but you can very quickly recharge them when you have a fast charging net on the motorways. Yeah, but you know, Elin is now also offering his superchargers for that. Was that his plan in the first place, actually? I think yes. What did you just say? So for everyone who hasn't noticed it yet, Tesla is opening their superchargers also for other brand vehicles bit by bit now. And there are actually theories that Elon Musk more plan to be a service energy provider than being a car builder. Let's see how that one turns out. And on the driver's side, you can have an additional charging port here, but then the AC only, still a very practical thing to have. And the front is open right here, driver's door on the inside. And then we go here with another 80 liters, so quite spacious, for example, then for the charging cables. Some 400 liters of trunk capacity, electric hatch, and here it goes. Oh, awesome. Look at that lens flare. That's beautiful. So you can make a trunk perspective even more beautiful. Mm. Nice. I love visuals. <laughs> so around 400 liters, 405 liters to be exact in the capacity. Uh, it fits very well for normal luggage pieces and so on. In the backpack here, you have to push it a little bit in, so that here would not work. You see it right there. This would not work, so higher things you need to push it a little bit in. Um, and here, if you push this one more inward, here you can see the, you know, the ruler. This is one meter or 40 inches for the total length. That's actually quite okay. And underneath here, you have some more small space. You could also fit a charging cable there. The car key is nothing new, but you have the Audi rings here, touchable in a metal style or galvanized style. These details are the ones we want to have as car enthusiasts. RS badge, when you have the RS version, beautiful. Then, door closing sound. Hmm, with frameless doors, this could be tough, right? Hmm, but actually quite solid door closing sound, although we have frameless doors, that's nice. Inside then, with Alcantara here on the door, it's nicely done. Also like textile inside door handles. Then we have RS entry badges here in carbon fiber, also illuminated. Ooh. And my favorite Alcantara steering wheel. Definitely get this one. It just brings you joy every single day. As for seats, this is the optional animal skin pack. But however, they are in general more sustainable with this vehicle because the base will be a fabric on the inside, leather on the outside, or you can also get microfiber on the inside another on the outside which should be standard for the US. This is also the optional Super Sport seat or the S Sport seat and these seats are also available then with the sustainable materials. The base seat does not have these strong shoulder accentuations and the base seat is available with a leatherette animal mix only. And we had the fabric seat in the normal Audi e-tron GT earlier. I really recommend to go for that one. It brings more comfort and also better climate comfort. So it doesn't get that hot in summer and not that cold in winter time. Well, but the thing is, this here is the porsche Audi ever because the base is from Porsche. And you notice that when you get on the inside here, the control of the steering wheel on the, on the lower part is the mechanism of Porsche, for example. And also the seats do not feel Audi, they feel Porsche. And the problem is, yeah, and Porsche won't like me for saying that, the seats in sports cars of Porsche are not good as for the ergonomics. At least for me. Might be different for someone else, but the Audi seats are usually way better as for the comfort. So this is also the least comfortable Audi. It is called GT, but the seat ergonomics to me not good at all indeed. Then, height-wise, there's no problem. One with A6 or a 6 with 1. So you can even be a little bit taller. In the interior, I have a 12.3 inch screen and a 10.1 inch screen. And this is really different than the one in the Taycan. Ambient lighting here, e-tron, I've set it to red this time. Also in here, carbon fiber insert, different ones are available. So big difference to the Taycan is we have the touchscreen control here. There's also a touchscreen in Taycan, but then here, there's another touchscreen in Taycan right there, whereas here we have, yes, the classic climate unit with clicking sound. So glad to have that. And this would be one of my main reasons to go for the e-tron GT and not for the Taycan, because you could still better control the climate unit right here. 
then the shifting lever, so to speak, is right here, drive mode and reverse. Then you also have this rear view camera in a good resolution, actually, adaptive cup holders. And then there's this volume control here for the passenger side, actually. And on the left side here, the steering wheel, we have volume control. There's, of course, a very good possibility to change it while driving. And then we have the shifting pedals here. And by that, you can increase twice the recuperation. It's always reset when you restart the vehicle. They more have the philosophy of let it roll, use recuperation via the brake pedal. And that the possible recuperation is super high, actually. Driving modes are being changed right here. This is better with the Porsche, where I can do it at the steering wheel. These are the digital instruments and here my average consumption at the moment around 24 kilowatt hours and more kilometers and when you now take the net capacity of the battery 84 kilowatt hours divided by 24 that's then approximately 350 kilometers or 220 miles of range and this then indeed a realistic value in between so winter times or hammering it 300 kilometers or 200 miles and ideal conditions, cruise control, 400 kilometers or 250 miles of range. And here in the digital instruments this is my favorite view, but you can also switch the view, for example, this one. And of course, always great to have with digital instruments. Well, you have night vision, for example, also that's available. And you can have the map also here in the digital instruments, either left side or all the way over the place. Infotainment system is actually straightforward, so you have here, for example, the Apple CarPlay integration, and we also have the Bang & Olufsen sound system here, which is giving a great in-depth 3D sound, so I um, can just recommend that, actually. And the Audi system itself is also, you know, with a good overview. Sometimes in the recent versions here, you see, it's not that fast as you might expect it. Um, See here how responsive it is. This at the moment with the satellite view. Overall, I'm actually you know quite happy with the infotainment system, although it could be a little bit faster. Hmm, and that middle storage space here, really small, and either with a cable for the smartphone, Apple CarPlay and Auto also works wirelessly, but then the inductive charging pit is like here at the side. <sighs> overall, not a really good solution. Too little. The only thing that maybe encourages you in the Taycan is even trickier. And rear seating, well, you feel somewhat caged in, but still it's quite cozy. Legroom wise and also headroom wise, it directly fits for four tall adults, not more, not less. And you also have these so-called foot garages like this, that you still have place to put your feet, foot garages in the battery package. So that's why I also still has a middle tunnel because there's also, you know, some more cells are being stored. But I mean, it's actually quite cozy with the single seat set up here. Yeah, I think this, we can live with that. And you do fold the seats right from here, one-third, two-thirds split. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge. Here, sitting in dynamic mode, starting 40 kilometers an hour, Audi e-tron RS. Let's go. <laughs> Two hundred kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Even more. <laughs> let's 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 go, just go further. I mean, 250 kilometers an hour. This is. <laughs> oh my god! This is super insane. Look at that. How stable the car is, and just like lane change, it's like nothing. It's, the center of gravity is so low. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, yeah, power-wise, this is the Taycan Turbo and not the Turbo S, but like on paper, but <laughs> I don't feel any difference, like, you know, from the Taycan Turbo S or something. This is like, poof. I mean, it's like there, like the acceleration is instantaneously there. Whoa, <laughs> like in the moment I hit the throttle, it's bang, you know? And also without, you know, there's a little bit of the artificial sound. The Taycan adds more of this artificial sound, like we, we like, but here they kept it more subtle and I think that's also fine. 
I still wish that some manufacturers was, would offer like this, you know, you could pick like V8 or W12 salt or something, but yeah, I'm still waiting for that. Some of the ambient lighting you can see here, now especially like in this area, but not too much ambient lighting here. And whew, that got the adrenaline <laughs> pumping here. Oh, wow. Wow, this is like, oh, still got the light on. Wow, this is like whew, really hard to describe. You have to experience it yourself at some point. And a passenger would probably get absolutely nuts because you know you don't know what's and, and when when the thing is happening. So great performance, and this is indeed a big difference than to the normal Audi e-tron GT here in the RS version. Um, yeah, but still, of course, high extra price for that. And this vehicle, and equipped with everything there is possible to have, like this, you know, sport differential, which is not a real differential, but you know electronically ruled everything. Rear axle steering is in here, the adaptive air suspension. You can all get that optional for the normal e GT, but here in the RS, everything is right in there. And noise installation, you've heard it, is also superb. So even at higher speeds, you hardly hear anything. The extensive insulation, glass insulation for the front is standard. And for the sides, it's actually an option. And we also do have it in this vehicle. And that's also why it's so silent. Then also it's very good in the wind so the drag coefficient is quite good as well not as good as with Tesla though you know but already quite good however the efficiency of this vehicle is not the main thing so 300 kilometers or even less than 200 miles in winter times or when you really hammer it and when you go as efficient as possible more like 400 kilometers or 250 miles but then you has to be good temperature and also efficient driving but this car is so, so much fun. Acceleration from the traffic light here. In the, oh, <laughs> oh my God. This is so amazing. The rear electric motor has more power, so we still got this rear axle bias, so it doesn't feel too much all-wheel drive or front wheel biased. Yeah, acceleration on the motorway. It's like, oh, it's like a, GT3 hiding there. They're waiting for us or something? Hmm. I don't know. Well, we have the electric power here today, and this is, well, I mean, yeah, when you have that, you know, a car with great sound, it is much fun, but here, besides the sound, you're not missing anything. And the thing is, really, here yeah, the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e tron GT. They are so agile, although they are so heavy, because they have this, you know, massive weight from the battery that really puts the car to the ground. They are so great to control. It's just such an awesome feeling. When we exit this tunnel, we can have another acceleration when we're already at speed. So we start at 90 kilometers an hour, so like 50 miles an hour, and then accelerate it out. I hope this car will pass to the right there. Yeah, he will. Two hundred kilometers, one hundred twenty-five miles. That's already almost two fifty again. This is such in. This goes and goes and goes, and I mean, it's not even too loud in here. And this could easily be Nurburgring Nordschleife. Uh, not sure if there was ever any vehicle besides the Taycan where I went so fast with the and in such an easy way and still it feels so controlled this is really so amazing I have to turn on the AC a little bit higher <laughs> because it's getting sweaty here uh, the Taycan by the way is stiffer as for the suspension here the Audi e-tron GT really lives up to the true GT spirit saying like Grand Tourer suspension wise even here is the rs so you don't lose you know any comfort when you go for the rs instead of the normal e-tron gt however what you do have to say is the seat in comfort as for the seat ergonomics it's not that good neither in the taycan nor in the audi maybe a little bit better here especially when you have the fabric or dynamica seats here with the animal skin it's even less comfortable so more comfort definitely with the fabric or dynamica seats However, 
this, you know, the, the ergonomics should be better in the seat, you know. So for long journeys, not really sure if that keeps up with the GT Promise. So sporty driving fun, without doubt, amazing. But I would wish a little bit more seating comfort. By the way, assistance systems, also have it here. Adaptive cruise control, set here at the left steering wheel column, the blind spot monitor. It's very well integrated in the side mirrors. Maybe you did we see that? Well, it's hardly anyone can overtake you with this vehicle, but it's really well, well integrated in the side mirrors. So you also have all the assistance systems features if you want to go for them. And here also here, car steers along. But I mean, this Alcantara steering wheel, I rather want to grab it myself. Also tells me, <laughs> grab it yourself, Thomas. By the way, in the individual mode, you can also pick the sound basically in three levels. And I mean, even if you're on the sporty mode, it's not too big of difference. You hear it a little bit, you know, in standstill or something, but um, the difference is, but again, not too big. And in the individual mode, you can also, for example, just put the suspension stiffer or something, but you know, I'll keep it with the dynamic mode and put all the way sporty up. And now also up out of the fuel's peak. Let's go. Oh, dear. Well, we always have to pay attention. That's why I always stay focused. So, that was a sweet one, right? So, let me go here. Oh, the steering is just perfect. I mean, it gives you such a natural control. At the same time, it's not too stiff, so you can very well and easily control it. And Look at the steering commands. Now there's kind of like a 90 degree bend, a little bit less than here. I mean, it just fits to the road. You're in perfect control, really. This is this typical Audi progressive steering, and I just love it. They really master that one here, and look at that, how the car comes out of the corners. And, whoa. And also, you know, it comes, around a little bit with the rear because we have more power than at the, at the rear electric motor. Wow, this is so much fun. And indeed, I mean, sound would be cool in a way, but I'm not missing it that much. Yeah, just excellent. This is so great. And you definitely have as much fun as with the Porsche Taycan. You have, of course, more acceleration fun than with the base model here. And yeah, it's just a little bit more comfortable suspension right, with the Taycan. So together with the user interface here, you know, which is easier. So indeed, I would go for the Audi e-tron GT if I pick between Taycan and this one. However, we have also a lot of Taycan reviews and also the base review here of the Audi e-tron GT, the non-RS version. See you at these videos.